Well, the major averages ending the day sharply higher, led by technology and the new, that new sector, consumer services. But uh, we still had the, the worst week for stocks in more than seven months. Next week, of course, a huge week. We've got a lot of big economic reports, and the earnings continue to pour out. Here now to help break it all down, Hal Lampert, Point Bridge, Capital Founder and CEO, and David Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Wealth Management CEO. Uh, let me start with you, Hal. Uh, a, a real tough week in the market. President Trump lashing out at Jay Powell, uh, sort of saying, hey, you guys are loco, and you're hurting not just the economy, but the stock market rally. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I, I don't have a problem with President Trump talking about the, the Fed and what they're doing. Uh, he has every right to. The Fed is, the, the chairman's appointed by him. It's a political entity, although it is independent. But President Trump understands the economics of this. The Fed's going to be raising rates. Everybody knows that. It's probably going to happen again in December. And then the projection is, what are they going to do in 2019? Is it going to be three rate hikes? Is it going to be four? I personally think they probably ought to take a pause after maybe one other Fed rate hike. And that, because at the end of the day, if you look at what's going on in the markets, you got housing, it's, it's way down. You've got autos down. Those are both cyclical. It takes about six months for a Fed rate hike to work its way through the economy. So we've had this going on now for about two years of Fed rate hikes. So the Fed rate hikes from two months uh, or six months ago are now going through the economy, and it's already taking effect. It's slowing things down. CPI comes out at 2.2%. Uh, which was below expectations. There's not a, a real fear right now of inflation. Yeah, in the, the CPI, so I, I think, was at 1%, the PPI at 2%, uh, and, you know, both again benign. But, David, uh, Fed rate action takes a while to work its way into the economy, but it hits the stock market in, in nanoseconds. So, what did you take away from this week and, and this recent weakness in the market, and, and how do you think we look going forward? Yeah, you know, I think I'm not surprised by the volatility that we just saw. I mean, normally we see this volatility in a midterm election year. But the good news is on the other side of this. Look, historically in a midterm election year, you know, 12 months later, the market has never been negative in the last uh, 70 years, a year after midterm years. And the fourth quarter return for the market in midterm years is close to 9%. So I think we're going to see actually a melt up going into the end of the year. Why? David, because does, that, does it matter what party wins uh, with respect to that midterm, those midterm, uh, it, it, you know, for instance, if, if the Republicans were to lose the House and or Senate, would that change it, the equation? I, I don't think it'll change it much. I think it's more about certainty. Markets hate uncertainty. There's still an unknown now what's going to happen with the House, possibly the Senate. I think once markets know what uh, to expect. I think you'll see the market take off. But again, corporate buybacks, I think, are going to fuel us into the end of the year. Now, I do agree with the guest about 2019 that we could see a slowdown. But look, I have nothing to fear going into the end of 2018. Hal, today was an interesting uh, session, and I'm going to get into greater detail with it. But what we saw was money pouring back into names that people have already made big money on uh, and, and a lot of disappointment with the financials. Uh, J.P. Morgan was the worst performer on the Dow. And the regionals just got wiped out. Is that a sort of canary in a coal mine for you at all? Are you concerned when the banks aren't performing uh, what it can mean for the overall economy? It, it is a concern. I mean, the, the yield curve needs to steepen for banks to do well. And so people are looking at the yield curve, and if it doesn't steepen, that's really bad for banks. But there's so much cash on the sidelines that people are looking to get in on these dips. And I agree. I think that after the elections, we're going to have a rally again. But we could still have some downside here for the next couple of weeks. And, but people are going to buy these dips. And where they're going is typically they're looking at these, these names that have run a lot historically and made a lot of money for people. So they jump back into Amazon, or they're going to jump back into Netflix. Right, right. And those are kind of the names that are, are leading. And, and the financials, until we get a steepening yield curve, uh, I think they're going to have a harder, harder time. David, what do you see as leadership going forward? Uh, you know, I like communication services. I think energy, we're very bullish on energy right now. I think you'll continue to see uh, energy uh, prices, energy companies do well going into the end of the year. But look, you, you don't want to try to beat the market. I, I think we got to join the market. Index funds, uh, you know, a portfolio invested in index funds should do very well uh, over the next three months. All right, gentlemen, thank you both very, very much. Appreciate it.